As an example, uh, let's look at the einstein uhlenbeck process. Remember, this is this process. Uh, it's an isodiffusion whose drift is minus the value of the process itself, and speed is 1. So this is something a bit like a Brownian motion, except that it's always tending to drift back towards 0. Uh, if it's positive, it's got negative drift. If it's negative, it's got positive drift. So this is very much not a martingale, um, because its drift is not zero. But let's see if we can make it a martingale by changing the probability measure. Another way to write this process would be with the integrals. xt would be wt minus the integral like that. Of course, this is still not an explicit formula that tells you what xt is. It's just an equation that it satisfies, but uh, we'll need that in a minute. If you look back at the first time I introduced the einstein uhlenbeck process, there is a somewhat explicit formula there for what xt actually is in terms of wt. But uh, Cameron Martin Gersenov, what do we need to do? What should the gamma t be in this case? Well, we want it to be that to make the thing a martingale minus the drift over the speed. Uh, for this process, the drift ut is minus xt and the speed is 1. So in fact, the gamma t should just be the process xt itself. And then we're going to have this other thing called w tilde t, w t tilde. What will that be? Well, it's supposed to be w t minus the integral of gamma, like that. So w t minus the integral of x s dx, which, looking back to the expression we wrote here, is just this expression again. So in fact, the wt tilde in this example is also just the process xt. So, all right, we've got these two processes. They both turn out to be just xt again. What can we conclude? Under p, the probability measure we first thought of, that's where w is a Brownian motion, xt is an einstein uhlenbeck process, The property of being an einstein uhlenbeck process it comes down to just statements about the distributions of certain things, so that can change when you change the probability measure. But as long as we stick to p, xt is just an einstein uhlenbeck process with wt here, this w being its internal Brownian motion. the Brownian motion that we use to write xt in this way, and that's its internal Brownian motion. Now we define our new probability measure q, and all we have to do for that is write down the radon nicotine derivative. This is the cameron martin gersenov change of measure. Integral, this the first one is the stochastic integral. And the second one, the ordinary integral. I've put in xt in both these places. In the general case, we would be putting the gamma t. So that's our change of measure. Goodness knows what this is, but it's a random variable. And then under Q, what happens under Q? What happens to XT? Well, the thing we know about Q is that under Q, WT tilde becomes a Brownian motion. Um, since WT tilde is XT, we 
can say that xt is a Brownian motion. In general, it would just be an isodiffusion martingale. But in fact, in this example, we can say more than that. It, it is just a Brownian motion. And what happens to W? W was a Brownian motion before. Now it becomes a Brownian motion plus drift. Wt now has Xt as its internal Brownian motion. So we've completely turned things around. Notice especially that um, there's a capital T here, which I didn't even mention until I got to writing down the Q. But that's important, capital T. There's an interval of time involved here from 0 to capital T. And we are only changing the probability measure with respect to things that happen in that interval of time. So when we say we've changed xt from an ornstein uhlenbeck process to a Brownian motion, we've only changed it within that time interval, 0 to capital T. We actually couldn't change it for all time, because if we changed it for all time, that would um, change certain events that have probability 0 and 1, and you can't do that with an equivalent probability measure. That's why when we do the, this Cameron martin gersonov thing, there is always just this finite interval of time, 0 to capital T, and you're only ever changing things on that interval. Once that time interval ends, the process will revert to its original behavior. It will still be an einstein uhlenbeck process. For another example, let's look at geometric Brownian motion. Remember, geometric Brownian motion is this Ito diffusion. Oh, it satisfies this stochastic differential equation. Its drift is a multiple of itself, and its speed is also a multiple of itself. That is, this r and this sigma r are just constants. Um, when I introduced this before, I said that it's used as a model of a risky asset, the price of a risky asset, the price of a stock in a stock market, or something like that. And in that context, one of the most interesting things about it is this number, this r, that determines its growth rate. Um, remember, that, that would be the interest rate if we were just talking about ordinary compound interest and didn't have the random bit added on. So what we're going to do now is a cameron martin gersonov change of measure, which changes that bit, changes the drift of the process. So let's let gamma t, the gamma process in the change of measure, be this. Just a constant. So s here is another constant. Um, and so this whole thing is a constant. So the, the gamma t process actually doesn't depend on t in this example. It is just a constant, uh, which I'll therefore just call gamma. And what that's going to do, as, as we shall work it out, is um, essentially it'll change the value of r to another value s. So this is how it works. We have to do the CMG change of measure. That's the general formula. Um, in this case, since gamma t is a constant, we can write that a bit more explicitly. Since we're integrating a constant here, this is just this first integral just becomes gamma times the integral of dwt. So gamma times wt minus w0. w0 is 0, so just gamma wt. And same here, we can just take out the gamma squared, like that. 
So that's what our radon nicodem derivative will be for the change of measure. It will just be this. So this is just a simple random variable now. Uh, the only thing that's random is in it is this, the W sub capital T, the value of the Brownian motion at the end of the time interval we're considering. What about this guy, the WT tilde? What's that in this example? Well, in general, that's supposed to be this. But again, since gamma is just a constant, it reduces just to that. So the only change we're making here between the gap between the W and the W tilde is to add or subtract, depending which way we're going, a linear term, constant times t. Here it is in differential form. Like so. And what's the conclusion? Under this new probability measure Q, WT tilde is a Brownian motion. And then you can work out what would happen to the um, to the W and the W tilde. So let me do that. It's always worth writing these things out separately. Under P, under Q, what happens? Under P, W t W itself is a Brownian motion, and the WT tilde, well, that is just WT minus gamma T. So it's just a Brownian motion minus a linear term in T. Under Q, well, now we've got ourselves a Brownian motion WT tilde. And what does W do? Well, that's just W tilde plus gamma T. So under Q, W is a Brownian motion plus a linear term in T. All right, back to the process we first thought of, though. What does all this mean for XT, the geometric Brownian motion itself? have this, dxt is rxt dt plus sigma xt dwt, um, which is a perfectly good thing as long as we're only working with the probability measure p, and we know what w is under p, it's a Brownian motion. But if we want to work with q, we had better have this expressed in terms of w tilde instead of w. So that would be Rxt dt plus sigma xt, and now this is dw tilde, here's the relationship we need, plus gamma dt. So that's going to be r plus sigma gamma xt dt. plus this. So under, under the probability measure Q, we see that X is now still in eto diffusion, still has the same speed as before, still sigma times itself, but its drift has been changed to this. Its drift is still a constant multiple of itself, but it's a different constant. And in fact, because of the way we define gamma to be s minus r over sigma, that means that r plus sigma gamma equals s. So this finally is the equation now that this is the stochastic differential equation that x now satisfies. And you see it's the same one we had before. It's still the geometric Brownian motion equation, just with a different constant here. So 
under Q, Xc is still a geometric Brownian motion. with the growth rate being S instead of R. That has great financial significance. If this is a model for the price of a stock or something like that, then the growth rate R is of great interest because that's essentially your return on investment. And so if you can change that to another value, that's sort of saying we're changing the probability measure such that this is either a better investment or a worse one depending on which direction we change that constant in. You might remember that way back in the beginning when I talked about you know, what's the use of having different probability measures for things. Well, one answer is that different probability measures on the same sample space can represent different subjective probabilities, different views of the future. So in financial terms, what's sort of going on here is that we are coming up with two different probability measures that might be thought of as representing two different views of how good an investment this is. One view in which it has this growth rate constant R, and another alternative view in which it has a different value, 